Hi again folks, I'm going to use clips of Sky and Ellie working with the two-handed tug as a backdrop for this video because my yard is a muddy mess. I also want to thank everyone for dealing with the crappy camera angles and just to let you know it doesn't all stem entirely from being uncomfortable out in front of the camera. I keep my camera in one place all the time so the dogs are less likely to wipe it out and most of the clips come from actual training sessions where I'm recording video for myself and I'm focusing on the dog so I can see what's going on behind me and find out who is cheating. I think I'll try and get a second camera down the road. Okay with that said I'll get on with this video. I originally wanted to make this a single video on a deep dive into my own personal training rabbit hole but that's a bigger conversation than I thought when it came down to putting it all together. Instead, I'm going to cover it in chunks and in a way that will hopefully make sense and provide some food for thought and maybe help someone out. So in this video, I'm going to discuss a tip that may help you get more visual focus from your dog. It is something I do a lot of through all stages of training and day-to-day -day handling and that is communicating through visual cues instead of spoken word. Communicating through visual cues practices the dog with looking to us for direction. How many times have you heard that phrase? My dog looks to me for direction. I don't know about you, but I have heard it regurgitated a lot and most of the explanation cheapens what that skill really is. Looking for direction does not come from baiting with treats or avoiding a correction. You may get a behavior that looks similar, but the mindset of the dog is very different and in the latter case, the dog's body language is often a dead giveaway, especially with your average pet dog. A great way to work visual focus is to have a signal for as many of your basic obedience skills as you can. Turning luring motions or the motion you use to direct the dog with leash pressure as you are training commands is an easy way to create those signals. When I teach the sit, I create my signal and layer the verbal command right over top. I do this because the dogs are naturally so good at picking up body language, I can count on the signal becoming the primary cue and the verbal gets conditioned in as I practice and then I separate the two later on. Now if your dog already knows the verbal commands and you're trying to install a new signal, this is not the same thing. The dog will almost always regard the verbal cue as the primary and ignore everything else. To establish the signal for a known command, and I'm going to give a simplified version right now, all you have to do is use a gesture you want for that command and use it just before the verbal command with a short pause in between. The pause not only separates the two cues, but this is where you're going to be able to see whether your dog's taking the visual cue. The pause should only be a short couple of seconds and really just long enough to see if the dog's taking the visual cue. And if not, help them out with the verbal command. It will take some reps before they begin to recognize the cue, but working it out doesn't take long. Remember to mark and reward it when they get it right. From there, it's just a matter of balancing training time between verbal commands and physical cues, and you have a very effective way at working your dog's visual focus. Thanks for watching everyone, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content.